So I, um, as my intro said, I work as a junior front-end developer at Cast Iron Coding, um, a small agency here in Portland. Um, and this is my very first job in the field after doing a boot camp last year. So cross-browser testing and support um, wasn't really something we had time to talk about much in my boot camp. There were some general instructions to like look at our projects and other browsers and devices. But I didn't even know how I could access Internet Explorer while I was learning to code. Um, so I didn't encounter the joy of IE11 until I began this job. So um, what I'm going to talk about tonight is um, some of the things I've learned in six months of making sites look good on Internet Explorer. So um, I'm going to mostly focus on IE11 specifically, because that's the furthest back we support um, at the company where I work. And um, that's what I have the most experience with. And I'll be addressing Edge some too, especially in those really fun cases where IE11 and Edge need like totally separate solutions. Um, and so I'll talk about some common CSS issues, how to fix them, and why it's important to go through all this effort anyways. So who here has had the experience <laughs> of working hard on a layout and getting it absolutely perfect in Chrome and Firefox and Safari, and then opening it in IE11 to find this bullshit. <laughs> it's really not a nice feeling. Um, my coworker and I have dubbed this category of bugs as wild and free, as in content breaks out of the carefully considered containers you've set for it, like a wild and magnificent stallion. <laughs> so, the good news is that with a whole bunch of these issues, your whole layout can be fixed with just a few lines of code. Um, so the issue with this one uh, was flex. There was a flex a flexbox container with two columns inside, um, each one set to flex one. And then on mobile, the columns um, went down to it went down to flex direction column. Um, so just like a really common two column layout. Um, on most browsers, the flex one sh shorthand will work just fine. But in IE11, um, the columns totally overlap one another, as you can see, um, because they both begin at the top of the container and take up the full width. Um, so luckily, the uh, fix here is n not too hard. Um, all you need to do is at that breakpoint, and in this case, the solution was to um, set the flex basis to auto and the width to 100% on the child, and that got these totally happy and harmonious columns. Um, so it's just that IE doesn't recognize that shorthand. All right, so um, some other com causes of wild and free elements are, um, can be with grid. Now, IE11 technically supports CSS Grid. It just supports some features of it partially or differently or not at all. So um, an auto prefixer will take care of some of the issues. Um, or sometimes it's like a different interpretation of an auto value. So in a recent case that I saw, uh, we were using minmax with a grid template. In that case, auto was misread and the element didn't get any height. So here, I'm just setting that to 100% instead was the fix. Um, with more complex layouts, you may need to write a fallback layout in Flex. And um, there's a resource for some more comprehensive information about using Grid in IE11. Um, and I'll put that back up at the end. All right. So, speaking of fallbacks, uh, let's talk about when things just aren't supported at all. Um, like this stretched out frowny bird on an image that should be object fit, but isn't in Internet Explorer. Um, sometimes it can be hard to tackle these kinds of problems because it's not immediately clear which property on which element is the culprit, even if you're watching for the telltale red squiggly lines in Internet Explorer's slow and deeply subpar inspector. <laughs> so a few examples of, of unsupported things that might give you trouble are um, initial and unset. And these can be super useful for creating a clean slate on certain CSS properties at breakpoints. Um, but unfortunately, I have learned the hard way that, surprise, they're not supported in IE11. Um, these can be hard to pin down because they can look, a, this kind of problem can look a bunch of different ways. Um, but if you're having phantom styling issues, it's always a good idea to search a project for initial and unset. So you might need to set uh, or to use auto or none or zero or, zero or whatever else is uh, 
relevant to that specific case. Um, additionally, um, a great tool for dealing with browser compatibility, com excuse me, compatibility in CSS is the supports at rule. It allows you to write rule sets that will only be used if a browser supports that particular, particular property and value. But unfortunately, IE doesn't support supports. So <laughs> it's not possible to create fallback rule sets for IE using supports not. However, you can do the reverse. So in your normal rule set, you can write what is essentially the fallback and then use supports to write the rules you'll use for most browsers. For example, um, my coworker recently had a case where he wanted to use a grid layout that had a lot of unsupported features. So he wrote an equivalent layout in Flex, and then he put the grid layout inside a supports grid auto columns min content. Um, and this can get complicated with things that IE 11 technically supports, but interprets differently than other browsers. So it's definitely not a catch-all. Now, a big one is object fit. Um, this is something we use a lot at my job, so it's a huge bummer that it isn't supported by Internet Explorer. Now, background image will have the same effect of adjusting the, an image to the container size without stretching it, but it doesn't have the same accessibility features on an object, as an object fit image, and it, you really shouldn't use it universally instead. Um, so one possible solution is to use some JavaScript to add background images to containers and browsers where object fit isn't supported. So here's a really simplified version of that, um, which uses modernizer to detect if the page is loaded in a browser that doesn't support object fit. And then um, in your markup, you would give the immediate parent container to um, all of your images uh, that you want object fit, a class called something like image container, and then loop through everything with that image container class, get the source of the URL um, of the image inside the container, and use the style attribute to set a background image within the same URL. And then you'd also add a class uh, to style other background properties like background position or background repeat, and then um, use that to reduce the opacity of the child image inside the container. Um, so here I called that image compatibility. Um, this works great for images, but not for videos because um, you can't use background image with a video. So for that, you can set the width of the video to 100% and the height to auto, then use a supports at rule targeting object fit cover um, to object fit the video and set the height to auto. Except this doesn't work for edge. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> this one is really unfortunate. Um, the latest version of Microsoft Edge supports object fit for images, but not for videos. Um, which means it tries to implement the CSS within the supports at rule, uh, but it just basically fails. So in this case, the best solution I've been able to find so far is to specifically target Edge with its own supports at rule and set the height back to auto. Um, now, normally you use supports to target a property um, and not a specific browser, but this is like literally an Edge case. So um, if someone has a bet better idea, I'd love to hear it at the next break. Um, all right. So this brings me to um, my final question, which is, why do we do this? So there are a lot of sound arguments um, as to why not to support IE11. Um, and it's really fun and easy and satisfying to take a shot at IE11. Um, I like to share a poem that I found um, on a sidebar of Quora. Why is Internet Explorer so slow? Why is Internet Explorer slower than Google Chrome and Firefox? Why is Internet Explorer so inferior to other browsers? Why do people hate Internet Explorer so much? And my favorite, do Microsoft developers working on Internet Explorer feel guilty? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> in all seriousness, there are some reasons why. Um, so the first one is just that people still use IE11. Um, global browser usage estimates vary quite a bit and don't factor in usage on private corporate networks but most of the numbers I've seen are between three and 7%. For reference, Internet Explorer had 91% of traffic 20 years ago, but three to 7% is still a lot of people, more than Firefox. And while hopefully Microsoft's new Chromium browser will continue to drive down IE11 usage, that's yet to come. 
Um, another reason is that with the right attitude, um, I believe that catching and squashing these kinds of bugs can actually be kind of fun. It's all about absurdity and detective work and deeply specific Googling, which is the kind of stuff that makes all programming fun. Um, also, here's a picture of me dressed up as IE11 for Halloween. <laughs> And finally, really the most important reason is that supporting IE11 is about tech equity and access. So a lot of arguments I've seen for not supporting IE11 as developers have to do with putting pressure on corporations to stop using IE internally by not developing for it. And that's a sound argument, especially if you're working in the B2B space. But corporations aren't the only end users to consider. So I learned a lot of what I've shared tonight uh, while working with my team at Cast Iron to build HealthShare of Oregon's new site. And in case you aren't familiar, um, HealthShare is the coordinated care organization for Oregon's Medicaid program in Clackamas, Multnomah, and Washington counties. So people use this site to find information on, um, about applying for coverage or finding the mental health emergency number in their county. And HealthShare found that in 2018, 9% of people viewed their site on IE11. So if you believe, as I do, that internet access is a human right, then we need to build an internet that accommodates how people actually access the internet, not just the way that we wish they, we wish they would. Well, there aren't necessarily hard demographic statistics on who is using IE11. My anecdote suggests that it's often folks who aren't digital natives, older people and people who, have had, who haven't had the resources to develop a high level of comfort adapting to new technologies. My experience working in nonprofits before my career change also bears this out. These users are often the ones who feel the least agency online, and they deserve pages where they can find vital information without it being covered by wild and free columns. And they deserve nicely fit images that don't look sketchy and untrustworthy. Hopefully there will be a day soon when IE11 will be truly a thing of the past and you don't need to write a whole new layout, but for now, the people need us to explicitly reset flex basis. <laughs> so uh, finally, I just have some resources um, on Flexbox and Grid. And then Can I Use is really like the authoritative um, source for what is supported on different browsers. And a quick note on that, which is that I talk mostly about CSS tonight, but if you're writing a modern JavaScript with ES6 features, you're going to need polyfills for older browsers like IE11. And if you're using something like Babel, there's an awesome integration um, with can I, the Can I Use API. So you can target browsers above spe specific usage rates um, as you transpile your code. And finally, I mentioned at the beginning that I didn't know how to look at my projects um, in IE11 while I was in my boot camp. And you actually can do that if you don't have a Windows machine. So, um, and you can do it for free. You can get a free Microsoft VM which you can run on VirtualBox. So those are some resources for if you're a student or working on personal projects. Thank you so much. <laughs>